you doing? It's Henry M. Orson. Good morning. Just rained a lot last night. My lawn's really growing in the back. I haven't mowed it because I just put seed down, so I don't want to mow it yet. I want to wait for the seed to germinate before I go and loosen it up and shred it all over the place. So uh, my first mow in the backyard, well, really second mow, is going to be when the grass is super long. Maybe then I'll whip out my Toro 616Z zero turn to do it. Uh, in the meantime, I've been working on a lot of push mowers because I've got a ton of them because people keep throwing them out and giving it to me, you know? So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm over 20 mowers right now and uh, I still have about five or six more to fix, you know? Uh, but in the meantime, there's this Toro Edger that I picked up about I don't know, three weeks ago or so. And uh, the reason why I haven't messed with it is because when I got it, it was missing the carburetor. I've been looking high and low, up and down, left and right for that carburetor. As you guys maybe know, I, I'm pretty good at finding parts, you know? Just, just cannot source this carburetor. There are some that are Chinese copies that may fit, but I'm not gonna go and spend $20 or something like that for a maybe, you know? Uh, in the meantime, you guys know I collect carburetors like crazy. I mean, I've got like probably 50 or so different carburetors in my bin of carburetors over the years. Um, I'm just gonna try like a few of them and see if they fit on the two studs, you know, the, di the, uh, the distance between the two studs. I mean, honestly, a carburetor is just a, a piece of equipment that allows for fuel to be misted with the right throttle and the choke flap and all that stuff, misted into the intake manifold. I mean, for goodness sakes, if you duct tape a, a can of carb spray on there and just tapped it, tss, 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 it'll run, you know? But uh, to find the carburetor for this, almost impossible. I know my friend uh, Nick from Lindenhurst, Five Speed Ash, he actually has this for sale on eBay for 70 bucks, but the carburetor leaks and you can't even really find a rebuild kit for that either, you know? So really difficult to get the carburetor for this. If I can't get this going with a makeshift carburetor, uh, I'm just gonna sell this locally for like 20 bucks. It's a shame too, because this is actually a two horsepower Suzuki engine. And it's a really heavy duty, good edger too, really good. Given that I'm, I have low confidence that I'm never going to get this going, I'll probably just sell this locally very cheap. I wanted to give you guys a good look at it. What we're working with here today, and being that I probably will sell this for cheap, I'm not going to have it anymore. So this is what it looks like. Look at that heavy duty belt. Almost looks like a uh, half inch belt just for an edger, you know. Given that this is only a two horsepower engine as well. Oil, 500 milliliters. This is made in Japan, of course, because it's a Suzuki. It's very high quality. Like if you guys ever had that Echo weed trimmer or something, right? That's made by Kioritz. That's also Japanese, very heavy duty. Anyway, so here's the um, muffler, or I'm, no, I'm sorry, air cleaner. Comes with actually two, they look brand new gaskets, you know? Here's the throttle linkage with the little wire. And if you look at it, it, it looks like you can put some kind of carburetor on there. I don't know if the distance between these two are gonna match many carburetors. Then you can you can jig the the uh, linkage to you know in length to fit the different uh, throttle um, configurations the fuel line with the fuel filter on it the on and off shut off switch um, I believe Nick told me this is actually a four stroke which I find hard to believe for a um, two horsepower model number is 58402 by the Toro company Minneapolis Minnesota 
Got the muffler cover there. That's still chrome-ish. This is activated by this rod over here with almost, it looks like a mushroom um, BMX grip. Uh -huh, see? This is to engage it so that it goes down. And that's it. Has a good blade to it. Uh huh. When it goes down, it stretches the blade, uh, stretches the belt, which causes this to turn. So pretty easy to use. Um, you just need a carburetor. That's it. So I'm just going to remove this air cleaner. On the bottom there's a clamp that allows you to take this. Wow, look at that. It's like new, man. And there are two nuts. <laughs> You're a nut. Actually, they're bolts. So look, that's kind of cool, huh? That the studs come off. So technically, you could just try to affix one in this diameter here. That ought to kind of make it easier, to be honest with you. Let's take that air cleaner element off. Now this carburetor here is a lawn tractor carburetor off of a power mower engine, okay? Uh, I could just see that it's not gonna fit, but this is off that uh, power no more engine, off the Craftsman's or the MTDs, the 420cc ones. Anyway, we could just, we could just look at this air cleaner here and see that it's not gonna fit. It's too wide, you know? Yeah, way too big. I need like a, a lawn, a push lawnmower type um, carburetor. It's not gonna work. Here we have a Briggs plastic one off of one of those newer Briggs um, 550E, 550EX type carburetors. Hmm. Well, the thing is it doesn't go through, see? So how would I even affix this on there? And it actually goes in like this, so there's no way to affix it on there. Hmm. It's interesting, though. Know what I mean? I know you know what I mean. What if I took the intake manifold from this? Well, that, there isn't because it's the it's the block. So that's not going to work. Actually, I found the spacer that goes to the in, I guess this is the intake manifold. Look. It's perfectly in there. Now you got the two studs there. Ooh. Wait a minute. These holes line up. Holy cow. Let's see. Well, it's a little smaller. Let me just, uh, let me just see. I put this in like that. Will it sort of match up? Ooh, that sort of matches up. Maybe I should try this. That, that lines up. Holy cow, the holes line up perfectly. Oh, what? Holy cow, that's interesting, man. Isn't that interesting? Look, I think it's interesting. And then the linkage would go this way. It would have to be reversed somehow, which is a problem, you know? I don't know, I think that's worth a try. What do you guys think? Let's try it. Before I get started on that, I wanna show you what's going on in my garage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mowers, all ready to sell, but they're not selling. My prices are a little high too. 
200, 125, 85. That's like 125. This is 135. Um, I have a really good one, the $200 one. I think that's that one over there. Got a recycler over there, another 125. Another recycler I'm working on, but all really good mowers right here that uh, are ready to sell. Have them all listed, been listed for a while, not really any bites. But I, I gotta, I gotta figure out what to do with all this stuff, you know? Should I put it back into the tent, you know? I just, I cleaned some of these, so I don't want to get dirty again, but I guess I'm gonna have to, because I can't even walk in my garage. As you guys know recently, um, I picked up a go-kart from the street, thanks to a tip from Frank the UPS guy. Uh, that go-kart was missing a wheel. <laughs> I sold the go-kart for 150 bucks in like 24 hours, you know, and never never even left the van when I picked it up. So it was a fast, super fast flip. One of the best ones ever. Didn't have to do anything. Just put it in my van and then sold it. You know what I mean? So finding 150 bucks on the street was great. Uh, later on, I figured out that the guy who wanted to buy it, who wanted to trade me for the ammo, wanted to do it, but I had already sold it. So I lost out on 1,500 rounds of ammo, which sucks. But it is what it is. What are you going to do? Anyway, Frank, the UPS guy, went to the same address yesterday, and he found this behind the tree. This is the wheel, the right wheel. Uh, should I call the guy back and give it to him? But then I'd have to meet him, you know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe I'll pump this up and see if it wor works. Sell it on eBay. Pumped it up. Holds air. It's got some water in it, though. But holds air. I took out all my uh, lawnmowers so I can decide which ones to park in the back and which ones to keep into the garage. Obviously, the better condition ones worth more money, I'm going to keep in the garage. So look, uh, let's check the Earl, huh? and I figured out this is a four-stroke. So the gas goes in here, and it's empty. The vent part of it, the gas cap, and then the oil is over here, so it is a not a mix, it's a four stroke. Four stroke, two horsepower. How about that? Oil's clean and up to the threads, so oil's good. Which is, I mean, I could tell that this thing is kind of like sort of taken care of, you know, other than me leaving it outside for like three weeks, you know. Because everything else other than missing a carburetor looks like it's in good condition, so you know what? I, Let's, let's spray some carb spray into the carburetor and uh, see if it uh, see if it'll turn over huh the switch is from off to on so it should work this goes upward you can take metal spray some see if it turns over ooh it did how about that huh second pull of course the second i'm getting ready to install this it's starting to rain found a couple of bolts that will fit the threads got a spacer here because i couldn't find another bolt that uh would work it is uh, 10 millimeter Henry, move your hand well i gotta install it don't i i can't see oh shut up Moving. Shut up. That's on there. That's it. I'm not doing any more, man. That's on there, man. So we've got that intake manifold. Oh, you see, this is popping up too much. So if it's popping up too much, this isn't going to fit on here correctly. Yeah. I have to get rid of this one. I have to find another one that would fit because the spacer is just too thick. I wanted to make up this size here. See? I put the spacer there because that one doesn't have threads. And I put, if I put this all the way through, actually it might work. <laughs> as long as it's gripping on with a few threads on the back side. It works. 
All right, so now I took the spacer out of there. Now let's see. How about that? Look at that. Carburetor fits. Now, the way the orientation is for the, you know, the throttle though. You know, you don't know if this is supposed to be like that or that's supposed to be like this and go out of control, you know. I, I don't know, should I just try to fit it in here anyway? <laughs> How about that? It fits. <laughs> awesome so I'd have to figure out a way to keep this from moving of course there you go it's on there so would I try to hook up fuel that goes in here and see I guess I would have to right so because uh, I think maybe the real carburetor and the carburetor meant for this was the input was on the other side. So that's why the gas tank is right here. It gravity feeds right in there. But because this carburetor is on this side, I needed to find a 90 degree angle elbow bended um, fuel line so that I could turn it this way. Because I don't want the hose to go uh, back up again, you know? Because then fuel would have difficulty going upwards as opposed to easy gravity feed. So this has a twist to it. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to see if this would work, you know what I mean? But uh, theoretically it should, because look, this is just, it's going down and then around, but it's, it's not going upward anywhere, you know? So the gas doesn't have to travel upwards. It's just pulled down by gravity which theoretically ought to work. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, I mean, I don't know if this throttle's gonna work, obviously, you know what I'm saying? But uh, it's interesting though. Um, and if it does start, I could kind of move it with my hand just to get a feel of it. Uh, I haven't put this thing on yet because um, there's no hole for this one, but uh, actually this kind of seems okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna, and I don't know how clean or dirty this carburetor is either, so. But uh, we'll, we'll put some gas in here and see if this runs. Gas tank seems to be clean. That's plenty of gas. What do you guys think? Think it'll run? Oh, I'm so nervous. So gas theoretically should be trickling down into here going into the bowl, right? What else does that carburetor need? Breather? Screw that, right? Actually, there is a breather over here, but it's not connected to anything. Uh, it, it, I don't know, it, it should run. <laughs> Let's give it a pull and see. Oh, doesn't feel right. I feel like there's no compression now. Not at all. It's like free, free uh, flowing, free wheeling. Leaves. Hardly any compression. Strange. Let's help it out. Blow some carby spray in the mouth. It doesn't feel right now. It doesn't feel like there's any um, compression.
<laughs> can you believe it we took a plastic lawnmower uh briggs 550 ex type carburetor and modified it to fit on the intake manifold to this toro uh edger a two horsepower suzuki uh engine on it <laughs> i'm speechless never in a million years did i think that would actually work and the throttle actually works with this the throttle lever it didn't start before because it was completely off and i put it to the uh, middle or three quarters started right up This thing works great. Maybe I'll keep it. No, I'm not gonna keep it. I never use edgers. I just, just use my weed whacker. Turn it sideways, boom, done. I don't want another piece of equipment, just the edge. Not to mention the fact that I don't have that much property to edge anyway, you know? It doesn't justify me keeping it, you know? But uh, yeah, I'll sell this locally for 100 bucks. I mean, it works, right? It does have a, you know, non-OEM, and, and we, let's uh, stress the non-OEM carburetor on there. But SOB, it works. Can you believe it? Now, how am I going to fix the air cleaner on there, though? To prevent the carburetor from falling off my makeshift um, intake manifold, I'm going to put a bead of RTV silicone so that it sticks to it. And it won't move. Let that cure, and that should stay there. Now to secure the air filter. Okie dokie. So I've been at this for a bit. Uh, what happened was I went to get the original brace, the bracket for the carburetor from this uh, 550EX Briggs lawnmower. So the bracket fit onto there, and then I had a screw that I put into there to secure the carburetor onto there so that the carburetor won't move from the intake manifold. And I made a bracket to put the air cleaner onto the carburetor. So now it has a car, uh, an air cleaner, and it seems to work just fine, surprisingly. Honestly, I don't really like edgers. Just take your weed whacker. Zzz, done. This is all just a lot of fluff. You know what I mean? But how about it, huh? Used a Briggs 550 EX type carburetor <laughs> and fabricated it onto here, and it works just fine. I'll list this for like uh, 125. Take as much as 80. 
pretty good that it got it got it started and running well, you know. Uh, I don't really like edgers, but it's a pretty good quality edger, to be honest with you. Anyway, thanks a lot for joining me on today's fabrication, uh, making a carburetor to fit on a uh, edger. <laughs> it was pretty cool. I was surprised myself that I got that to work, you know. But uh, just to show you, you if it fits, it'll work. Probably. <laughs> See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Fearless DJW here, and we'll see you next time on Mothers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video, and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.